Hey guys, it's me Storming. In this video, we are going to talk about and get prepared for the upcoming Venus retrograde, which yes, I know it's not coming until October 5th, but it is coming. So we want to have this conversation a little bit beforehand so that you can prepare, so you can understand, you can be grabbing your charts and looking at what's going on or, or speaking to someone about it so you can get some help, some clarity on some things that are happening. So um, nestle in for a minute. We're going to talk about this Venus retrograde, okay? First of all, Venus is going to be going retrograde October 5th all the way until November 16th. Now it's going to retrograde between the signs of Scorpio where it will start and then it will end in Libra. Okay, so these are two very different kind of energies in how they work in the first place. But now the actual astrology of the retrograde really has some nice aspects to work with. I mean, first of all, it's actually got Venus over here in a really nice trine with Neptune. Now, while this is great, it can also be a little bit deceptive, but I think that it also brings some really great things to the surface, especially because when we're in a retrograde, it's about the past. We're going back. We're pushing to the past. So you may need some clarity, some forgiveness, some unconditional love around something in the past, some tenderness for sure. Um, and this will help you to make that transition. Now, the other aspect we've got going on is that Venus is also going to be in a square to Mars as the retrograde begins. So this can be a bit challenging. This can bring some intensity to the surface. Now, Venus is retrograde, like I said in the beginning, in Scorpio, which is also a Mars-ruled energy. Scorpio on its own is very intense between Mars and Pluto ruling that sign. So with the addition of being into a square to transiting Mars, this can bring challenges challenge. This can bring anger to the surface. This can bring a high level of attraction, which during a Venus retrograde, if you can avoid it, we really don't want to be starting relationships. But here's the thing about this too, that I kind of want to make clear in this video. Um, Venus retrograde is a very faded time. The things that are coming to you in a Venus retrograde and the people that are coming to you, the epiphanies and realizations that are coming to you are ones that are absolutely needed. You need to clean these up. You need to advance your understanding. You need to have this experience to advance it. So that's why I say, you know, Traditionally, it's not a great idea to start a new relationship during a Venus retrograde, or if you do, you really need to take your time because it's going to take some time for this thing to unfold. But I also know plenty of circumstances and situations, documented cases, where people met, met the next love of their life. They met someone very significant during a Venus retrograde. So, you know, what I can tell you is that I'm not God. I'm not whatever is up there, you know, motoring us around. These are just the suggestions that we hold on to in astrology, okay? So first of all, let's talk a little bit more in case you're new to this channel. This is your first Venus retrograde. You're just studying, whatever it is for you. Let's talk about this Venus retrograde in transit, okay? Because what that means is that it is the transiting Venus, the one that is moving in the sky, that will be in retrograde. Now, when Venus goes retrograde, Venus is our planet of love, of beauty, of sensuality, of harmony, of diplomacy. But this is also an energy of finances. So what we're going to relook over during a retrograde are things around finances and romances. No quality romance without quality finance, right? So it just depends on what is happening for you in these areas. But like I said, Venus moves us into a very faded, significant time. So the lessons that you're gonna relook over in terms of how you interact in your romantic relationships, how you interact in your finances are things that you need to see. Now, Venus retrograde, because it's from the past, right? We're moving backwards, is infamous for bringing back old lovers. Right, And even if that old lover doesn't come wisping in or anything like that, it could be the thought. It, you could see this person in a dream. You could, for whatever reason, catch a smell and it remind you of this person. And it may be because it's time to clean that up. I happen to believe from my own experience that Venus retrograde is also really good for bringing up past debt. So... If you have money that needs to be going out, because this is the thing about money, is that it's spiritual. If it is not your money, you're not going to keep it, 
right? So if that's something that needs to be happening, it is also a time where with Venus retrograde, if money did not belong to someone else and it belongs to you, it could certainly be coming your way. It may take a little bit longer to get there, okay? Now, ultimately, because it is a retrograde, it is very introspective. We're going in. We're going inside to look at these things because we need to reconsider, reevaluate, re-edit, um, reassess, reconvene with people sometimes and see if we can get this little thing back off on, onto better footing, okay? So what will happen at this time, I think, is especially it's a wonderful energy for looking at how you give, receive, express affection, right? And also in your relationships, in your current relationships, whether you're single and we're talking about romance, if this is just you and a business partner, do you feel seen? Do you feel valued? Because Venus is a value energy. Do you feel valued? Do you feel like you're valuing the people around you? Because it is way different to be with people, right? To be with our families than it is to be at them, right? Because I know how to be at the people around me where I'm just kind of there, but I'm not tapped into who they are. And I am certainly not letting them see who I am. So in this way, does this have value for you, even in your family sector, right? So we're going to consider some of those things. Now, Venus is also your beauty, right? The way that you aesthetically express yourself can definitely be seen in some of your Venus energy. So you may be re-looking over that. Uh, typically, Especially if you are with this particular Venus retrograde, if you are a Taurus, if you are a Libra, or if you are a Scorpio, you will feel this a lot more intensely than some of our other signs will, okay? And if you're feeling like your mojo is broken, <laughs> this could totally be a thing because when Venus, our planet of beauty, is basically taking a nap, is flipped around there, we don't feel so forwardly hot and sexy and magnetic, right? You could be feeling like, woo. But the other thing I think that this is good for reevaluation for everybody is how are you putting yourself out there? I mean, are you just showing up in the world like who shot John, like whatever? You know, because maybe it's time to start bringing that into a different realm. Think back, you know? Was there ever a time when you were dressing a certain way or doing your hair a certain way or putting your physical beauty out there in some way that you'd like to bring back into your life because I know when I felt like my sexy fell off during this last Venus retrograde, which it only happens once every 18 months, I felt like my sexy was totally broken and <laughs> I was pretty much willing to come outside in a moo moo because I just felt like it was just all for naught, you know? So it helped me reevaluate how to get my sexy back on the other side, right? A lot of self-esteem is here, a lot of value, all of these things. Last thing I want to say for this too, with Venus retrograde, Venus is an energy that likes to keep, it likes to possess, right? So it may be a great time for you to look over your material possessions, your secrets, your fears, your any of these things and see what it's time to let go of. What can we clear out and make space for new energy, new love, new appreciation, new value, sharing your new skills, making new money, right? Where can we make space for all of these things to come into your world? That's the energy of Venus. Being in the sign of Scorpio, I'm going to tell you, Scorpio is an energy of intimacy. It is deep. It is a connection energy. We connect at this level, but it's deep. It's passionate. It's controlling just as much as it is um, deep and connecting, right? So with Venus in retrograde here, you may be looking at past issues in current relationships and seeing that you need to make some space. You need to find your way through it. I will tell you during a Venus retrograde, the relationships who have their cracks, you're going to see what's in those cracks because it's going to rise to the surface, which is an opportunity for you to go back and heal them. And remember, again please this is not just romance okay now if both parties or all people involved where this cracked relationship are at if they are wanting to heal it there's a potential here to set things right but if everybody's not on board for resolution these relationships will likely fall out of your world and if they fall out of your life it's because they don't belong there anymore. The universe is literally helping you clear space. Say thank you. Feel the feelings of it if something is leaving your life, even your own identity. Say thank you. And let's move forward into what's next because it's trying to give you the cosmic setup for the next best version of yourself, okay? So make room. 
Now, if you are single during this Venus retrograde, you're like, I'm so single it hurts, or I'm so single and I'm happy I'm not looking for any of that, this is still a phenomenal time for you to look back over what has love looked like in your life? What are the beliefs you've had about love? Where is your self-love at today? And not only where is the self-love, but are you sharing it, right? Remember, Scorpio's a joining energy. Are you sharing? Are you doing, studying, putting out there, um, the things that you love and that you're passionate about because they have value even if they scare you a lot, right? Are you making space to have for everybody? Are you making space to have the kind of sex that you want to have in your life, right? Are you are you having fake orgasms because what in the actual F word? Absolutely not, okay? Right? That is dishonest on your part if that's what's happening. Where can we bring some honesty to that? Scorpio is an energy of sex, honey, okay? So you can be bringing your consciousness consciousness to all of these things. Now, because Scorpio is also the energy of reproductive energy, this may be a time too um, where maybe you're going back in, you're doing some testing, you're looking at something reproductively as well. It could certainly be a thing that's on the agenda. Now, when Venus takes her move and she slides out of that Scorpion energy and into this Libran energy, first of all, Venus rules Libra, so she's not terribly uncomfortable in a retrograde in this position, but you are going to look at relationships. This is very relationship-based, right? And in this, for some reason, I'm getting a vision, so somebody must need this. Um, this could have to do with bringing financial resolution to legal situation. So somebody must need that information. So that's something to consider there as well. And depending on what, which house Libra is falling in for you, you're going to look at your conscious chosen connection with other people here. Okay. So very good. That's what the retrograde is about. Now let's talk a little bit about the actual astrology behind this retrograde that's going to be happening. Okay. So first and foremost, if you didn't know, retrogrades happen in pieces. There's the shadow period before, the actual retrograde, it comes direct, and then it finishes a, a shadow period. And ultimately what this is like is it's like, think about it. A planet is getting ready to ultimately flip around and go on vacation, right? So when you're going on vacation, you have got to... Um, you got to pack your bags, right? And that's what we're doing in the first part of the shadow is that planet is packing their bags, getting ready to go for a little vacation. Then it turns retrograde. It's gone. I'm asleep. I'm over here. I have to visit the past. Then it comes direct. I'm back in the game, right? But then it's been on this wonderful vacation, all of this information, this news, these souvenirs, two cups, two shirts for sure. And I got to unpack my bag. So that is the process of what's happening. Venus has been in the beginning portion of its shadow time since September 2nd. So if you have started to feel your romance or your relationships or your finances or your value or you've been starting to feel like, I don't know, I kind of feel like I need to just do a full house clean out. I need to get rid of some of this stuff. This could be Venus active for you. So kind of keep that in mind, okay? Now, as the retrograde actually comes upon us on October 5th, Venus is going to be in that trine with Neptune. And these are what I call the Bopsy twins because these two love love, right? Like even a Venus retrograde still loves love, <laughs> right? So Venus and Neptune together here have a very romantic, flirtatious, kind of blissful influence on each other, right? Now, as Venus is also here, we've got Venus in that square to Mars, which like I said, will bring a little bit of challenge. So I wanna talk about that. Venus square Mars. Venus is retrograde, so she's looking away. Mars is direct, so he's looking right at her. Okay, now these are the lovers, and sometimes you gotta have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough. So one thing that can happen here is that you could be angry, right? You could be frustrated, you could be impatient, here. You're trying to get things done. You're trying to make these decisions. Um, Venus is also in Scorpio. You could be very suspicious of a partner or a person or a relationship in front of you. You could think, oh, is that person spending money the way they should? You could just have all of these suspicions that run to the surface for you that you can't necessarily super explain, but they're trying to pique your intuition in some way, okay? So here's the other thing though. I told you, you might feel like your mojo's a little bit gone and because your mojo's feeling off during this retrograde, you're not sure of some other things and X is coming back and you have just had enough of them. A job is maybe coming back depending on where it falls in your chart and you are like, I left there for a reason reason, you could be anxious, right? You could be anxious, you can be impulsive, and you could be frustrated. 
So keep that in mind. This can be a frustrating energy. And what I will always tell you in Venus ever, no matter what direction she's facing, when she comes into a square with Mars, please make sure you're doing physical things to get that energy out of your body, right? Okay, now the other thing that Mars is about, and Venus is in a partially Mars ruled sign of Scorpio, this could be about sex. This could be about <laughs> sex. You could be like, I seriously have cobwebs growing down here. I need to handle this situation. I'm not having the sex life I would want to. My reproductive things need attention, right? Any of these sexual things could be coming up. Sexual dramas, traumas could be coming to the surface to be healed. Whatever it is, remember, the energy, the push, the intensity of that Mars energy is going to put you in a square, which when you're in a square, you want to take an action to get out of it so that the tension releases and you will take an action to move that forward, okay? This is again to where I actually think the Venus trine Neptune is very good because it helps you, it brings a little bit of a dreamy influence and helps you drop your shoulders down a little bit, it helps you breathe, you're a little bit more compassionate, right? It's almost like it helps to turn down the volume a little bit on the intensity because you are able to meet this with a different reaction. Maybe there's a little bit more compassion. There's a little bit more tenderness. You feel like there's a spiritual reason, right? Sometimes when things are going wrong, we're like, why is the world doing this to me? Other times it's like, okay, what's my part in this? Uh, there must be, I must have a spiritual fingerprint here somewhere and I need to work through it. And I think that this helps. I think this helps put... Some pause to it. Not only that, Venus and Neptune together are creative. They're very creative. So you could be being creative and finding creative solutions to what's going on as well. So I think that's very good. Now, as Venus is getting ready to um, come direct, which is going to be on November 16th, she will have slid into the sign of Libra, which is beautiful. But what's also going to happen is she's going to be sitting in opposition to Uranus. Now, I think that this is really really good for brand new solutions because Uranus is here to mix some things up. He's breaking down the structures that we've had here before. If there's challenges, if we have been looking for solutions, he's going to show up with new creative inventive ones, right? But what it always signals, no matter which direction Venus is, when she gets and hops into and interaction with Uranus, we're going to have a change to our love life, to our finances. We're going to have a swap. This one is opposition. So opposition usually means there's a person on the other side of this. So you could have somebody who's changing position in your love life, right? Maybe somebody's going from a friend to being a little bit more because it's not all doom and gloom. Everybody's not here to break up, right? That's not what this is about. This can be a very positive time, and I hope you use it as such. If you have a partner, um, it could be that you guys end up deciding to make some really big decision together, right? I would tell you if you can wait to fully make that decision <laughs> until after the retrograde, you're probably better for it. But it could be that. It could also bring attention to the table where you're like, we need to solve this. We need to fix this. Let's say you're in a long distance relationship. You keep trying to connect and the Zoom keeps dropping. You need a new technological situation, right? Um, Maybe you're in some kind of partnership, business, friendship, romance, and you're ready to go in one direction and this person is not ready to go, but you see that. You're able to see that because Uranus has come and he's broken down some of these structures so you can see the reality of what this needs to look like in your life, okay? Now, I want to just say this as a last thought. If this Venus retrograde finds you with love, romance, all of these things, nowhere on the agenda, this can be kind of exciting for you, right? Because Venus is also over money. So maybe Uranus is trying to wisp in some kind of windfall or some kind of financial benefit to you or shows you a skill that you have that you haven't been putting to good use. It's a very stimulating energy. So whether it's around relationship, finances, values, or materials, I have a client who is an... Um, antique hunter, right? Venus retrograde is phenomenal for her because here she is wanting to buy these antique pieces that are crazy expensive and people are going, oh, I have to just get this out of my house. Just take it for five bucks. Oh my God, just get it out of here, right? So where a Venus retrograde is not great for huge purchases, it could be great for someone getting ready to get rid of something that is of benefit to you. You can turn into a huge purchase later. That's just an example, guys. Show how that manifests in your own life down below, okay? I would love to hear for you as we make 
make it through this Venus retrograde time? What are your experiences? What are you going through? How is this playing out in your chart? Where is Venus and Scorpio hitting in your chart? Where is Venus and Libra hitting in your chart? Let's talk through it. Let's see. And please don't forget, take advantage. This is my one sale of the year at the holiday. Make sure you take advantage of coming on in. Let's sit down. Let's do an appointment. We can look over all of this stuff together and help you understand what's going on. When you can understand it and put a name to some things, it's always easier to walk through, okay? All right. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Please feel free to let me know what you think of the new background, the new camera. I'm trying out a lot of things over here, and I look forward to your feedback, okay? I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.